we're going to run through uh, some of the sea safety and rescue gear and just have some suggestions about where you might want to carry it uh, on your boat or on your person. Uh, like most of this video, it's not meant to be prescriptive. We're going to talk about a few ideas and people will come up with their own decisions about where they carry their own particular safety gear. Uh, the Coast Guard talked about flares and depths, so I'm not going to discuss that anymore. But what I will talk about, like I said, is where you might carry them. So, um, looking at my buoyancy aid to start with, uh, in this pocket here, I've got uh, my day, night, smoke flare. It's on my person because if I'm separated from my boat in the water, I'm a small target to be seen. So I want to make sure that I have my flare with me um, so I can either let off the para side of it, the red flare, or the smoke flare if um, the helicopter or the IRB or the lifeboat comes to, to rescue me. Um, just one other thing about this flare, if you're using it at night, then you can locate the red illumination by running your fingers up the flare and you can feel these little notches. Obviously letting the smoke off at night won't be very effective, so you need to let off the red illuminated flare part and that's how you find out it is. You can have on a bit of string, I tend to just make sure it's in my, my buoyancy pocket. These are all waterproof and sealed as well. What else have I got on my buoyancy? My form of communication, um, my first form of communication with the Coast Guard is on a VHF. So I tend to carry that on my personal, my buoyancy aid. Um, two reasons for that. One, it's attached to me at all, all times. So if I'm in the water, I can still use it. The other reason, um, because it's only a handheld VHF, the uh, reception um, or transceiving won't be very good if I have it on my bet bag. So the higher I can get it up, uh, even if it's just body length, will mean that I'll get better reception on the VHF. So I carry it in my back pocket here, so the area is sticking up, so I've got better reception. It's attached to a lanyard and I can just reach behind it, pull it out and the lanyard's long enough for me to be able to use it effectively. And um, that can be on or it can be off, it depends what I want to do, whether I want to hear forecasts or, or just use it for emergency purposes. The final bit of kit I will carry on my uh, buoyancy aid is a strobe light. Um, the advantage of this uh, over flares is that they don't have an expiry date and it just requires that you change the batteries um, and check it occasionally. Um, the, also the, the advantage of this, uh, if you're separated from the boat in a big sea, is that it's a form of light. So you can be seen from, from a long way off, um, being such a small, small target, which is really important. And with the uh, night vision that both the uh, search and rescue helicopters and the RNLI and the Coast Guard have, there's a good chance of you being picked up if you have some form of illumination that's permanently attached to you to your buoyancy aid. Just like a life jacket on aircraft, they will always have some form of illumination. We've talked about what I carry on my person. We're going to just talk about what I might carry uh, on the boat that's accessible. Now I've got, got this as a deck bag down here. Um, you either love them or you hate them. Some people find they get in the way of your paddling. This is a fairly low profile one, so I find it's, that's not really a major issue. And it does give me the ability to carry a few things that are very accessible just in front of me. Um, what have I got in here? To start with, I've got my other form of communication on the sea. Uh, I tend to use this as a, as a backup to my VHF. It's just another form. Uh, it's a mobile phone and it's just in a waterproof case with a preset, the uh, Coast Guard number in it. So it's fairly easy for me to use. Um, they have saved lives. There's been a few, -ish, few instances where people have used these. Uh, unfortunately not in a waterproof case, they just managed to get uh, a rough location before the thing packed up. But they've saved at least one sea kayaker off the northern coast here. Um, I tend to ring the Coast Guard with this if I want to speak to them for a bit longer, so if I'm, before I'm getting on the water I might chat with them on the phone. It's a one-to-one -one link and it's a bit more formal than informal sorry, than using the VHF. Yeah? So I carry that as a backup to my, to my uh, VHF. I've got uh, my flares. We've talked about the day-night smoke that I carry on my person and I might have two other forms of flare in a, in a waterproof package just to make sure they last a little bit longer. Um, so they're sealed and they're roughly uh, they're a parachute rocket flare and a smoke, another smoke, flare, handheld smoke flare in there as well. So put them in a waterproof bag, just keep them dry. 
there. Uh, on top of the deck bag, I've got um, the pump, pretty useful with a kit on the sea. Uh, fairly obvious what you're going to use it for is extracting water from boats. How you have it and where you have it is entirely um, a personal preference. I tend to like mine not attached to the boat so I can pull it out, use it without having to worry about it, but it's a string getting in the way. I haven't had it come off the decks yet, although probably saying that the next time I go out it will probably fall off. Um, and the other advantage is if it's not tied to me or the boat, I can pass it to other people fairly easily and they can use it to empty their own boats out. Yeah, and that lives under the bungee cords here. Probably the final thing we're going to talk about about general rescues is making life easy for yourself so um, obviously when you're involved in a rescue you have to be dealing with a boat that's full of water somebody in the water swimming around you have to be given some form of directions to and you've also got your paddles and possibly their paddles to deal with you're definitely going to have your paddles to deal with so uh, onto the subject of leashes love them or hate them um, I think the more you use them the more we haven't done this rescue video we've realized how how valuable they actually are you know, I suppose if you go out and, and involved in rescues all the time, you may maybe you want to think about where you're going. But um, there's two, three types. Um, there's an elasticated version, which just velcros around the paddle, and that can be clipped to. Normally, people, most people clip the, um, the paddle to the elastics under their deck lines or the lines running down, rather than on their body, because yeah? it obviously that hinders you getting back in your boat. So clipping it to one of the elastic deck lines and then if you need to do a rescue you can then drop the paddle forget about the paddle and it's fairly accessible uh, the only disadvantage of these is, was um, is you didn't get eye injuries from them there was somebody uh, a few weeks ago that had an eye injury from one of these pinging off and hitting him right in the eye so um, one small disadvantage of that if that's, a, if that's a worry for you then you might want to make up your own homemade jobby Rather than spend money on a manufactured one, just a bit of string. Chloe fits around there with a bit of tape. And again, it's just a plastic clip that can fit under the lines. And uh, you can use it. Obviously, if you're a solo paddler, if you like paddling on your own, or like paddling at night, then having a paddle leash is a pretty valuable tool just in case you drop your paddles. Um, whether you're carrying a, carrying a set of splits or not, it does make life a lot easier for you.